Hello everyone. Um, I am going to um, go over with you concerning uh, MLA and um, weaving in quotes um, in conjunction to your argumentative research paper. Uh, so I, I don't actually, I do have a Prezi, but I'm not going to follow it this time. I'm just going to show you uh, some screens, um, a couple of documents. Uh, so kind of bear with me uh, whenever I um, uh, pull up uh, these uh, different screens on occasion throughout this uh, video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up a Word document here. Okay, so I have a Word document. Um, I titled it MLA example, but I'm going to title it something different actually on here. Uh, and it's usually defaulted at Calibri. Now I know this is a review for a, a, a lot of you all, and uh, uh, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and go over this part anyway, just in case you have any questions. Uh, I'm also going to show you something on uh, Google Docs as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, most of the time just be uh, looking at this Word document. Uh, but it's it is uh, um, uh, already set um, defaulted at Calibri. So I changed it to Times New Roman 12 point font. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, come over here to the spacing. Uh, over here for Word document is in the middle. So um, right now it's at single. So I'm going to go ahead and go to double spacing. And I write my name uh, in the upper left hand corner. Um, I put in yeah, English, uh, I'm just going to type in English 1302, uh, one of my sections, and uh, the instructor, I can type today, um, and today is the 13th, so it is the day, month, and then year. Okay, um, and then... We have a title. Um, actually, I don't know, I'm just going to put that in there for right now. But this, this is where your title would go. Um, and then before I forget, I go ahead and I insert the page numbers. And I, so I click on insert. And I think on Google Docs, it's very similar. I click on inserts, uh, page number, click on page number. Uh, we do not want the page number as a footer. Uh, we do want it um, in the upper left, right hand corner, excuse me. We do for MLA, you do want to go ahead and show um, the page number on the first page. Okay. And this is not APA. Uh, you're, you're writing your paper in MLA format. So for MLA, you usually don't have a, a cover sheet. Um, and uh, I, I know that I've had some students do that. It's fine, uh, but uh, for MLA, unless the instructor tells you to, you do not um, do that. Uh, one little thing I forgot. And when you want to go back up, you usually just click it uh, a couple of times, and you usually can go back up to the page number. Um, you need to type in your last name. Okay. Um, and you don't have to, but I do it because I like everything um, balanced. But this is also defaulted at Calibri, and I have to go in and change it. Okay, so hover over this right here. Click on it a couple of times. So we have, um, this is where you put your instructor's name. Um, you have your typical um, shell for your MLA paper. Uh, now you are ready to go ahead and and uh, up to this point you've been uh, researching, uh, reading your um, uh, sources, uh, writing down notes, or at least you should have been uh, getting to know your sources and um, have a rough draft of sorts uh, coming along. Um, and really with rough drafts, I really don't want you to worry about MLA uh, too much. I just want you to get words down on paper. Uh, so I, I'm really, um, I have gone over MLA with you before, but I really didn't stress it too much for the rough draft. I just want you to have some words, uh, your thoughts, ideas. Um, if you uh, uh, 
chose to uh, weave in some quotes along the way, then that is perfectly fine. Um, but a rough draft is a rough draft. Here we're getting ready for that final draft. And so let me, um, at this point, I'm going to go to uh, one of my sources. And whenever I do that, and I, I'm just going to type in uh, Eastfield uh, College Library. Here we go. So I already have it open, actually. Uh, but I click on this. And this is where I want to be at. And I click on Articles and Journals Databases. You can click on any of this. And if you need some citation help, you can click on MLA as well. And whenever you are uh, writing an AP paper for another class, uh, this is here also. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, for this class, uh, uh, doing a lot of online work right now. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and go to the databases something that we can access easily. Um, okay, so we have lots of databases. It can be uh, very overwhelming uh, at first whenever you're looking at it, but for the argumentative research paper, um, I would recommend Opposing Viewpoints, um, Academic Search Complete, JSTOR is wonderful. Uh, you can go to any of them really, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and start at the Opposing Viewpoints. And you'll see that this comes up. And in the midst of the COVID-19 um, um, outbreak that we are all going through right now, uh, this is uh, one of the first uh, topics that uh, came up. But as you can see, and if you click on this little light bulb um, icon, Browse Issues, there are a ton of issues uh, topics that you can uh, look through and this is really a nice place to start just to look for a topic you can get a topic here and go to the other um, databases as well uh, so it it's very very helpful but I did I already pulled up the uh, tab I had went to um, let's see here I think I went to uh, standardized testing that, that is what I went to. I went to standardized testing and uh, looked through this. And as you can see, there are um, uh, different uh, types of uh, sources. There's the academic journals. Um, that Those are uh, journals that contain articles uh, that have been peer reviewed by other people within the field. Uh, so these are, may not agree with all of them, but uh, these are overall trustworthy sources that you can go to. Um, and uh, viewpoints, some of these uh, may be reliable sources, some of them may not. Uh, most of this though, I would say, are reliable sources. There's videos, uh, statistics, there's some um, uh, topics that contain uh, a tab for uh, primary sources. That's wonderful uh, to get your primary source from. Uh, references is kind of like encyclopedia. Uh, 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 references, a good, wonderful place to go just to get info. Uh, so I really like the way that this is laid out. Um, but I do have an article, and I well, I clicked on academic journals, and then I found this. This is the article I found right here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go up to the top. Um, I okay. So the the title of this is "How Should States Design Their Accountability Systems?" Um, I had heard an argument once before, this is not my argument, uh, this is somebody else's and I thought it was a really good argument, uh, that uh, school systems should not be using uh, standardized testing at all, that they should use something kind of like a portfolio system. Uh, so say if I was writing an argumentative research paper arguing that I think that um, uh, school systems should be using uh, portfolios instead to uh, gauge the progress of students, then you know I may want to go to this article. I'll tell you right now that I did not read this article all the way through. I, uh, but whenever you are actually doing a research paper, you do need to read 
articles all the way through. And the reason being is so you can uh, properly um, uh, uh, cite the source. Uh, you don't want to misrepresent what someone is saying. Uh, so you need to read the sources, uh, uh, understand what they are saying. Um, and, and then that way you have a good grasp on it and you are able to cite properly. Um, I, I did read through this, uh, um, but you know, I, I, I skimmed through it. Uh, I'm not uh, writing a paper over it. I'm, I'm showing you, uh, or showing you how to do this. Uh, but if I were, I would definitely need to uh, read it all the way through. Um, I do know that uh, this is about uh, the assist the assessments that are done in uh, California and Florida, uh, and so they're they're uh, comparing the two um, and and asking the question how should states design their accountability tests? And so I am uh, going to pick a quote here uh, that I think would be helpful for my paper if I were to write a paper on this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy it and then uh, come over here and and then I will insert uh, this quote over here and I'm going to go ahead sorry let me go ahead and bring this screen up here to where you can see what I'm doing um, match destination formatting um, at this time I will have had um, uh, sentences before this, sentences after it, uh, it would make more sense uh, because whenever uh, it make more sense than uh, than this right here, uh, because you are weaving in your quotes at um, at strategic points within your paper to support your point, ultimately supporting your thesis, whatever that thesis may be. Uh, so I have this quote right here. It is a direct quote. It is not a, um, a paraphrase. And let's see here. I need to put it into double spacing. Okay, so I have this quote. I have this um, a direct quote that I'm going to use uh, to support uh, that I think assessments uh, should go to uh, portfolios instead. And um, I need to have a, um, a signal phrase. And I have this website up here. And you can go onto Google and you can type in Purdue Owl signal and lead in phrases. Um, these are uh, phrases that basically state um, Doe declares or Doe argues that um, the work of, I mean, and you see here there are um, verbs uh, that are used typically, uh, actually uh, all the time, to uh, introduce a quote. Notice here, and I like the way that they laid this out, and this is something for you to know in the future. Um, APA uses past tense to open up a quote, or to introduce a quote, I should say. MLA as well as Chicago, which is also t uh, called the Turabian format, uh, uses uh, verbs that are in the present tense. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, that is really the way you are supposed to be uh, introducing these quotes. Introducing quotes, uh, it's, it's really nice because it helps the flow of the paper um, and it if it doesn't have a, 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 a signal phrase or lead-in phrase, it's really known as a drop quote. Uh, so definitely need to um, uh, weave in those quotes properly at the right place, at the right time. Um, remember the, the Kairos uh, thing that we were talking about, balance and timing? Well, this is one example right here where you want to maintain that balance and timing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my article that I have up here. And I noticed something really interesting about this article, and you will run into this, even though this is a peer-reviewed article um, from Education Next, uh, Publishers Hoover Institution Press. Um, it is peer-reviewed, 
but it does not have uh, an author listed. So, and I can uh, tell by right here uh, that there is no author um, listed. So uh, we can work around that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and while I'm thinking about it, I have the source uh, or the, the citation right here. I am perfectly fine with you using the uh, citation generator on these databases. Uh, they're usually located at the bottom or at the top right here where you can just click on that and uh, the citation will come up. It'll come up in APA and it'll come up in Chicago as well. Very nice. Go ahead and use it. I already see uh, a mistake uh, on here that I'm going to cr uh, correct, but I'm going to, oops, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go ahead and come down here, type in works cited. Um, we want this title to be centered. Come over here, go back to left center, and as you can see, um, here is the, um, the citation. It needs to be in matching destination uh, format, uh, formatting, uh, but here you will notice and in MLA, APA is the same as um, uh, also, uh, every line after the first line needs to be in something called hanging indention. So for a Word document, you could do it really easily. Just highlight it, come over here to where uh, the spacing is at, uh, where you can choose what spacing that you want, come to line spacing options, and um, in the middle here, uh, there's the indention section. You want to uh, go right here, click on the special, click on hanging, and then click OK, and you got your hanging indention. Um, actually, too, I'm going to uh, copy this link, and I'm going to insert it as a hyperlink. So I come over here to insert. Come over here, it's located like in the middle of the screen. Uh, click on link and put in the link. And now we have a hyperlink. Uh, I'm going to be going back and forth a whole lot right here, so please uh, bear with me. I have a uh, Google Doc uh, open here as well. And so I'm going to go back to my source and copy that. Come over here to the Word document paste it, and this is defaulted at Arial, 1 in times New Roman, 1 in 12 point font, and oops, I wanted a double spaced as well. So come over here to double spacing. Okay, so this is Google Doc. I just uh, copied and pasted and you know, pretend that this is a works cited page that I'm uh, working on right now. Um, we're excited. We want to center this. Okay, now we want the hanging indention here as well. So what you do, I have to think about this for just a second. Um, okay, you come over here to format and you click on format. You come over here to align and indent um, and then go to the very bottom, indention options. And at the bottom of this box, you uh, go to special indent, click on hanging and apply. And there you go. So you have a hanging indention um, here. You can also do it by hand. Uh, come over here and press enter tab and then come over here again, press enter tab, but this is so much easier. So that's how you can do this in a Google doc and in a Word document. Um, okay, so um, if you're working with a Word document, you gotta make sure that you press save um, along the way. Um, you don't have to with a Google doc, it saves automatically, so that's nice. Uh, okay, so I have my uh, works cited right here. 
And so I am going to, and I don't have an author, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a, um, a, a signal phrase and an uh, in-text citation. Uh, so I come up here and say, um, the argument, I'm just going to make one up off the top of my head, the argument that is presented in the um, article titled, oh, this was the mistake here. And I know on the actual article uh, itself, these words aren't um, capitalized, but I would suggest, actually, no, that was not capitalized. Um, hold on. No, actually, I'll go capitalized there. It's more than three letters. Okay, so th this is all capitalized. Um, I would come over here and I would copy this and um, bring it up here. So the argument that is presented uh, in the article titled, How Should States Design Their Accountability Test? Um, hold on, let's see here. Is, let me go ahead and bring this over here. Is, and then the, um, uh, in-text uh, citation, or not the in-text citation, I'm sorry, the direct quote, uh, the focus should be on student performance on grade level assessments and core subjects and student growth on those assessments from year to year. Um, with an open um, direct quote, uh, closed direct quote, uh, you have your in-text citation. So now you, in uh, the um, um, signal phrase you have indicated the title so here preferably you do not want to use the title maybe you can use um since you do not have the author's name you can use this here education next um so education next is what i'm going to put right here if i had a page number which in this case I did not, but if I do, I would put the page number there. Notice how here um, the article um, is um, a um, an item uh, or a written piece within something that's bigger. Uh, with MLA, something like that uh, is enclosed, and you can see. Uh, with quotation marks. The item that is, uh, I guess you say, the, the, the bigger one, uh, the one that contains all those written documents, sources, articles, chapters, uh, that is italicized. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do the same thing. It, it all needs to match. So education next is going to be, it's going to be italicized, excuse me, and then a period right here. So here I have my uh, direct quote. Uh, also, you could paraphrase it. Even if you're paraphrasing, you still have the signal phrase. You still have the in-text citation. I could also uh, flip-flop it. Um, I could say uh, the argument that is presented um, in the um, journal titled Education Next. So then I would put Education Next here. And then let me just go ahead and do that so you can see what it is that I am talking about. The argument that is presented in the journal titled um, Education Next is, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy, paste that. And then what I do here, and I know this uh, is, is kind of confusing. Let me go ahead and, and this is not going to be a telesize, but this one is. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, it's a telesize there because it is on the works cited page. Uh, the focus should be on, okay, so right here, I, I am going to put the title of the um, article instead if I, if I were to write it this way. You have a couple different ways. This is what's so confusing with in-text citations, uh, signal phrases, is that um, 
you, know, you have different options. Um, and I think that's kind of what makes it a little confusing. But with the in-text citation, use the first two to three words in the title um, of the article. So, and I'm, uh, it, it kind of looks uh, strange on the surface, but this is how it's done. So how should states, and, and, and that's how um, you would do it, the first two to three words, how should states, and then come up here and then put that, go ahead and enclose it with a um, um, direct quote. Um, so you have the open and the closed uh, uh, quotes, even though this is not the full title of the article, but that's how you do it with the in-text citations and then a period. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Uh, and let me just show you an example here of something that I've been working on um, something that has come up uh, from one of the students as well. Uh, whenever you are working with multiple sources, you might start off with a source like within a paragraph or so, and then you might cite it again, and then you might cite it again. Well, here I've uh, done that. It's a source uh, from an um, author whose last name is Mallow, and uh, his uh, book is uh, Rhetorical Power, and that is the full title, actually. Uh, but, and actually, I used it uh, consecutively quite a few times, uh, and it was on page five. And then I, um, at the end of the sentence here, I already see a mistake right there, um, I uh, uh, used the page number, but not the title of the book. You don't have to repeat it if it is something that you used previously. Same thing with here, page six, and same thing right here, page 15 through 16. Uh, so um, that is one little thing. When you're working with multiple sources, you don't necessarily have to uh, repeat uh, what is in that in-text citation, you could just include the page number. However, if you don't have the page number, then you really don't have a, a choice, okay? But if you do have the page numbers, and luckily I did because this was a book, um, I, I, I didn't have to repeat rhetorical power again. I just uh, included the page numbers. But whenever I went into something that was totally different, uh, like here, Emerson and the History, um, actually that's not the full title so I used in this case the I used four uh, words but uh, this right here in the middle the, these words were just so uh, small uh, uh, that I just went ahead and I included that uh, but I um, had to um, put it in that way but even if I were to have used uh, the rhetorical power I could keep on and just uh, use the uh, page numbers um, as well uh, until I used a different source. So that is something that I um, wanted to show you. Hopefully that uh, will make sense. Let me go ahead and go back to uh, the databases. So the databases, feel free to use the databases. Um, and uh, the, the databases, I think it's easier using the databases. Uh, you can just uh, refer back uh, to this you have, uh, you can search by years, uh, preferably something within the past 10 years, uh, unless it's like a primary source, uh, or unless it's something that you can really uh, use in your research project, you can ask me. Uh, preferably you do want something that's more up to date uh, within the past 10 years or so. Um, and it, this here, you can uh, put that in. You can uh, put in what years that you're looking for. So uh, academic search complete, if I were to look right there, um, it will um, ask you, let's see here, I'm just gonna type in school assessments and search for that. It's taking it a little bit. Okay, so I can go into a filter. I can um, just put in, hey, I just want scholarly articles. I want the full text. I want, um, I want it uh, within the past 
10 years. Okay, I'm almost there. Okay, within the past 10 years, and uh, that will that will come up. So you can do it that way as well. Um, I don't want you to be too overwhelmed by this whole process, uh, but um, using outside sources helps uh, with your argument. Uh, you got to use it though properly. Uh, put in those quotes where you need to use those uh, in-text citations uh, because if you don't actually, it's say if you you need to have it. You need to have the in-text citation, whether it's a paraphrase or whether it's a direct quote like this one, and it needs to be down here as well on the works cited page. Um, if, if it's not, if it's missing uh, either uh, at either place, it's technically considered plagiarism. Also, to something I wanted to mention, um, the uh, works cited page here, it is in um, alphabetical order. I already see something right here that needs to be uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, that was not. Uh, so be, be mindful of that. Uh, this all needs to be in alphabetical order whenever you're uh, compiling the works cited page. Okay, well, I believe that that is it uh, for uh, the uh, video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much.